Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon your respected viewers and welcome to a new episode of the Beliefs of Islam. In today's episode, we will talk about the argument from witness testimony. In the previous two episodes, as a matter of fact, we had laid out the foundations of a rough description of what the role of witness testimony is in shaping many of the truth claims we hold to be true. We had explained that since we are neither experts nor specialists in all fields, given that we lack the material funding to explore all aspects of the world personally, we depend upon witness testimony of others to shape our views on scientific facts, geographical truths, and the realities of history. We even depend upon our parents' testimony to believe that we are their children, for surely many of us have not actually taken a DNA test, nor would consider it particularly necessary to do so in order to verify our knowledge of such a fact. Likewise, witness testimony, given that it forms such a valuable, valid, and dependable source of knowledge, provides us with a means of knowing things and therefore solidifies presenting the argument of the linguistic miracle of the Quran to those who do not understand the Arabic language and therefore cannot experience the miracle firsthand. Now, the argument runs as follows. First, the Arabic language reached its peak at the time which the Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him and upon his pure family, was alive in. Second, the Arabs were experts at poetry and the Arabic language in the time of the Prophet in general, and poetry was their most celebrated asset. This is demonstrated in the following quotation. Whenever a poet emerged in an Arab tribe, other tribes would come to congratulate. Feasts would be prepared. The women we join together on lutes as they do our wedding time. And old young men would all rejoice the good news. The Arabs used to congratulate each other only on the birth of a child. And when a poet rose among them, that was by Ibn Rashid in his book Omda, volume 1, page 65. Three, experts of the language who rejected the message of Muhammad the Prophet even testified to the miraculous nature of the text of the Quran, as is seen in the following quote by Walid ibn al-Maghira, the experts on poetry among us, the Quraysh, stated about the Quran the following. And what can I say? For I swear by Allah, there is none among us you who knows poetry as well as I do, nor can anyone compete with me in composition or rhetoric, not even the poetry of Jinnas. And yet I swear by Allah, Muhammad's speech, meaning the Quran, does not bear any similarity to anything I know. And I swear by Allah, the speech that he says is very sweet and is adorned with beauty and charm. Abu Omar Yasser Qali in an introduction to the sciences of the Quran, Al-Hidayah, 1999, page 269. The vast majority of Arabs who heard the Quran in the time of the Prophet of Islam eventually converted to Islam and believed in his message. Five, the best explanation for this information is that the Arabs at the peak time of the Arabic language viewed the Quran as beyond the capacity of our composition. Sixth, the Arabic language has natural limitations. The Quran exceeds these limitations. Therefore, the best explanation for the origins of the Quran are a supernatural one, namely a miracle. Given that these facts are attested by both classical and modern Arabic scholarship, this witness testimony should be sufficient for all non-Arabic speakers. This is for today's episode. Until we meet with the new episodes, thank you very much indeed for being with us and assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.